So I did something really scary earlier this year and I actually sold at a huge, well-attended craft fair. And I know what you're thinking. Why is that so terrifying? Hi, I'm Pigeon. If you've never seen my face before, I run the Pigeon's Nest and my small business is a crochet design business. I make patterns and kits and haberdashery and all sorts of other crochet accoutrement. So earlier this year I attended and sold at Stitch Festival. Stitch Festival is a huge four day event. It is super well attended and I mean like 15, 16,000 people well attended. Um, it's actually run by the same people who run the knitting and stitching show um, that happens at Alexandra Palace every year and I think they've got a show now in Belfast. They run a lot of other shows like the quilting show. In short, it was busy. So this is a show that I found out about last year. One of my pals, Neve from Wimpress Embroidery, was there last year and I got a bit jealous. I'm not gonna lie, I got a bit jealous because I was like, oh, my business is just not there yet. I'm not like at that point, it's, oh, I don't think I'll ever get there. You know, it, I was having a pity party, but without the cake. So just a pity meeting. And I messaged Neve and I was like, I'm just feeling really jealous that you're there. I, I don't think I'm, I don't think my business is good enough. Um, she promptly messaged me back and was like, come tomorrow, because it was the last day, it was Sunday. Come tomorrow, have a recce, see what you think in real life, rather than just seeing it through the lens of Instagram. She is a wise bird. So I went up and had a look around in person and decided that actually, yeah, I think my business would be a good fit there, that I could do it. And I did, I booked, I did it in March. And if you, like me, have only ever done like small tabletop events before this, I'm gonna give you some tips, some tricks, and some things I learnt in this video. So maybe you don't have the soul-crushing anxiety that I did when I was prepping for this show. I'm gonna come out and say it. You are gonna be anxious because you don't have enough data and you are not gonna be able to get enough data until you do the show. What I mean by data is I run a lot of my business on information and the information that you get from shows, having done like tabletop shows for the last 12 years in my business, I sort of know what's gonna sell at an event and what isn't gonna sell at an event. However, Stitch Festival is a very different beast. These people are not here looking for gifts. These people are looking to spend their money on themselves. It's a very different vibe than doing like a Christmas show um, where people are literally looking for gifts. Um, so very different things are gonna sell. And I went into this show so anxious because I didn't have any information. I didn't have any data. I did have a lovely video call with my friend Neve and kind of I asked to go th like go through with her what sold well at her like when she did it in 23 and she was so gracious and so lovely and let me pick her brains about the kinds of things that sold. So I did have a little bit of data going in but nowhere near as much as I would have like felt comfortable having. The thing is you only get that data from you physically doing the show like even if going for a recce you can do a little bit of like okay this is the demographic this these stalls seem really popular that sort of thing the information i really like to have when i go and do these events are what types of items sold what what are the demographic like what is their budget what um kind of who are they coming with like they're coming with friends and they're coming with family members that does change the dynamics some part of people's selling behavior like this is all like technical stuff i forget i know because i've just been doing it so long that it's just it just happens but yeah the lack of data for doing these big shows is really scary so i will tell you now what sold really well for me when i was there and it was mainly my accoutrements. It is my stickers, it is my printed patterns. I guess as a crochet designer, a lot of people do PDFs now. I love a printed pattern and they sold really well. So things like my stickers, things like um, the whip bags that I sell, 
all those things the add-ons people are not coming to those events for like to learn a whole new skill from me some people are some people not but the majority of people are adding on to the knowledge they already have so they see a crochet stall and they're like amazing i already know how to crochet or amazing i want to learn to crochet but that that's way more niche than the people who already know how to crochet and want the add-ons who want to like expand their hobby those people tend to spend more money with me because they want to expand and i have that sort of stock i prepped so many kits that did not sell because i didn't know that there would be that many crocheters there because it's actually it's a sewing show i had to pitch myself quite hard to go there it's mainly sewing and fabrics um so i had to pitch myself quite hard to go however being one of the few people there that were kind of crochet based i think there was only two of us maybe three of us um worked really well in my favor but yeah kits next time looking at my sales data now i did not i prepped at least 25 of each kit i the maximum kit, kit of one kind of kit i sold was 10 the rest i maybe sold one two maybe five literally i had spent so many hours if you've watched some of my vlogs of my prep of the show my kids were helping me pack the orders they are eight and five like i did not need to be packing that many kits so now i have that data i don't have to take so many kits with me to a, a next show it's it's about re just refining what you know about already so yeah you're never gonna have enough data until you do the show so you do just have to bite the bullet and go for it has someone who's only ever done tabletop shows the size of my stand freaked me the hell out your stand has to be eye-catching it has to be it has to relink back to you as a brand as closely as possible i feel like i did that really well and i feel like i do do that really well and i've had a lot of practice doing it it doesn't mean that i wasn't terrified of setting it up in this space again i've never set it up in a big space like this but making sure that your brand looks like you somebody who does this really really well is emily harvey art her branding is just chef's kiss always looks great always on point um just mine isn't a color coded situation mine is a vibe mine's vibes related um, so don't feel like you need to have like a set colour palette. It is really helpful to make that really recognisable. But for me, it doesn't work as well for me because of my products being so many different colours. Like, And I need to be able to show my customers why a pattern could be for them. So I can show it in my feral bright colour way. But I also have to be able to show it in a neutral because some people can't grasp that idea that it could be for them if it was in a different colour way or in a slightly different pattern um you know so i feel like your stand is super super important for kind of bringing customers in but it doesn't have to look like anybody else's what actually i spent a lot of time doing as well was looking at um when i'd done my recce in 2023 i'd taken pictures of stands that i really, really liked and taken their information and took what i really liked about them why do i like that display so much oh i love that they had samples up i love that they had their storage was really clever or this was looked great this looked great so just again like it's gathering that data that's all it is it's just gathering data i actually used a you know you can find online like those room organizer websites where you look like you're doing a bird's eye view I measured all my stand stuff and I had a rough idea in my head of how I was going to set this up, what I was going to display, all that sort of nonsense. And doing the room setups really helped. I think my stand looked really good. I'm going to show you a picture of my stand just here. I'm actually really pleased with how it came out. Um, it's very much my vibe. So that's what that was what I was worried about, that people wouldn't walk into the space and totally get me and totally get my business but yeah doing some sort of room organization before like on one of those websites really helped me visualize it and also 
when you get there you're going to change your mind anyway but having some sort of battle plan especially when I couldn't just set up a tabletop and work it out like it was too big for me to do that doing some sort of like bird's eye view digital plan was really beneficial to my mental health I'm not gonna lie it was beneficial so I recommend what was I saying I've forgotten it is a four day show which actually means you have to be there for five days because you need the first day to set up your stand um this was so hard being away from my family for five days was really really hard and i don't mean oh my god i miss my family so much because actually it was quite nice the break was nice but the logistics of me the main child carer the main you know person who keeps the house rolling not being in the house the logistics of it was a nightmare. We are quite self-sufficient as a couple, my husband and I. We can generally manage all our childcare in the house. We don't generally get a babysitter. We don't generally have to ask our parents for help. My parents are five hours and two and a half hours away. My husband's parents are a lot older. Um, and yeah, we don't generally like to ask them for help. They've done their time, people. They've done their time. So we generally are quite self-sufficient and highly independent however the logistics of getting from our very rural village here in west sussex to london with all my stuff meant that we had to have a van of course but i needed mr pigeon to help me get the van there and then bring the van back to drop off so we had to ask his mum to do a school pickup and hang out with the kids until he got home so that was Wednesday. Mr. Pigeon then had to pick up the van again on Saturday because of course they were closed on the Sunday. So he went to pick up the van again on Saturday. <laughs> we had to leave our kids with some friends and then have that friend take my husband to the van place to do the pickup on the Saturday. My mum arrived on the Sunday so then he, my husband could leave and come and get me. The, the logistics of it all was exhausting. It was a lot. I'm not going to lie. Like, if you're child free, this will be like piss piss. But with kids in the mix, it was a lot of brain space. And then, we, like I said, we live really rurally. My husband had to bring his bike in the van. So when he dropped off the van in the main town, he could cycle back. Because there's no buses or trains that come here. Yeah. The logistics was a lot. It was a lot. So not only are you five days away from your family, you are five days somewhere else. Like you need to pay for accommodation. You need to find accommodation near where you are displaying and showing. That can be quite pricey. Thankfully, I have lovely friends who live in London who did not mind me sleeping on their sofa for four nights, which is what I did. Um, yeah, the accommodation cost is a killer. So if you have got friends, or, you know, you need to make new friends. That's the way forward, personally. Just the, again, logistics of going to a show. It's not, I know that customers just think we turn up and sell our stuff, but there's so much logistical planning and it was a lot for this show. Oh, and the reason we didn't keep the van the whole time was that it was gonna cost an extra 200 pounds. And I don't have that kind of money. Definitely make sure you have all your maps that you need make sure that you have all your paperwork for the venue that you need because they are not going to have the paperwork they are not going to know what's going on because guess what these big shows they outsource they outsource security they outsource parking they outsource a lot of the logistics to somebody else and yeah that was actually quite annoying like the parking permits and stuff and when we came to collect like we were meant to have a parking slot so I could move all my stuff down. It was literally carnage at the end. Carnage. Um, there was no point me trying to get a parking a, a spot, a slot time, because security, the parking garage actually closed. And they were like, yeah, yeah, this, it's full. People have been in there all day. All day. All day. They were only meant to be in there for their parking slot. What's that? But in these big shows, 
a lot of the departments don't talk to each other so you need to make sure that you've got all your paperwork so you can be like well this is what i've been told this is the information i have how can we make this work i actually went out and spoke to one of the parking guys and i was like look i'm really sorry but it's just me and my husband trying to pack up this van can we work where how can i how please help me this is the information i have because i had information as well i was about to be like this is the information i have this is what I've been told. I know you've been told something different and I know it's not your fault, but please help me. And they did. They were very lovely. But yeah, having like the logistics is a nightmare. So just prepare for it to be the worst and then hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. What was my next point? Oh, you need a pal. You need a friend. You cannot do a big show like this by yourself you just can it because you need to be able to go to the toilet and on these smaller shows it's a bit easier if you're on a tabletop it's so much easier just to turn to somebody and be like, oh could you just watch my stall would i run to the toilet honestly this show was so packed you have to like squeeze your way through people to get to the toilets um Going to the toilet is a 20 minute escapade. It is not a two minute jaunt. You need a friend to take with you to help you do these shows. I am so blessed to have my lovely friend Kaiti. I actually stayed at his house while um, we while I was doing the show. So I didn't have to pay for a hotel. So he's amazing. Um, I stayed on his sofa and then during the days he came and helped me on the stand, which was just lush, so good. Um, so he's actually doing the same again for me um, at another show um, where he's teaching so he'll be just doing one day and then he'll be coming to help me the rest of the time but yes it's glorious you need a friend for these events don't think you can just do it by yourself because you really can't and I don't mean that like you can't because you physically you're not up to the challenge it's a lot it's a lot and you need you need a pal 100% you need a friend you can't do it on your own it's too big it's too busy as well so you need a friend Sorry. another thing i learned from doing this show apparently being in an air-conditioned space with 15 to 16 thousand people over four days means you are gonna get ill so before you go to a big show like this, I've never experienced this at any other show. Before you go to a show like this, you have to prep your immune system. Start taking your vitamin C, start taking your health drinks. Um, make sure you take some electrolyte tabs because you will not drink enough because you will not have time to go to the toilet. Um, and when you do, you're gonna have to like squeeze through the crowds. So make sure you are prepping yourself healthily make sure you take fruit to eat make sure you take um because when you finish as well you're just going to want to get fish and chips and go to bed because it is you know you're going to finish the day like this because you're going to be so peopled out um even for the most extrovert extroverts trust me you're going to be like by the end definitely before a big show get yourself into like prime health please you don't want to do what I didn't I literally was on the floor for all of April it was the worst it was the worst okay this is the bit that I know you all want to know it's pricey but was it worth it now with my stand my lights the van hire buying a few new bits of the furniture. So this is not even including any stock that I've made or any stock that I've brought in. This is just the bones. It cost me over two grand. I know, I know, to get in the door. It cost me two grand, two grand, just over two grand. It's a lot of pennies. I was only able to do this show because I had some inheritance left. He actually ran his own small business as well. So I felt like that two grand I could invest in the business and he would like he would be proud of that but it's pricey it's a lot of pennies but I will say to you after the first day I had made back my pitch which is what we always aim for right um overall 
it was a great show for me in the business. I took just under six and a half grand in four days of selling and which guys like it was immense that's a lot of money that's a lot of money and even though it was hard work to get there like to do the logistics to make all the stock to have the you know anxiety filled meltdown about was this going to be the right thing for the business was i going to throw away two thousand pounds um yeah it was worth it I actually worked out from all the data I've got in my iZettle, because that's what I use, that in four days I've made more profit than I had in the last seven years of attending Christmas events. I know. Another great thing about these shows is the networking. So my friend Neve was doing it again, I took my friend Kitey with me, and I actually got to meet a load of other small businesses I hadn't heard of or I only knew from Instagram and that was lush that was so nice to make like physical connections with people and it was just so nice being surrounded by people who are crafters it also was an awesome space for my community my patreon my Instagram followers to come and see me in real life it was so nice I had lots of hugs it was lovely I actually had such a good time and it actually forged a lot of connections with people who do other shows. So I'm able to talk to them about those shows. Like, is that something that would work for my business? But yeah, it was so, so nice. Definitely, it can be really hard to network at those events because you don't want to... First of all, you've got to set up. You've got to do your own stuff. And it can just be a little bit like, uh, because, you know, is that just me? Maybe that's just me. Who's a bit the whole time i think it's just me isn't it but yeah it's nice to be able to then go out for dinner afterwards or just pop down when it was quiet so on the sunday i was able to pop down and kind of hang out with me for a little bit on her stand while kaiti watched my stand which was really lovely but yeah just really nice is that it is that it is that all there is yeah i think so and I'm definitely moving away from the smaller Christmas shows. I've actually decided this year I'm not booked any in. So I've only done three events this year, like in-person selling events. I've done Stitch Festival. I've done Carry On Crafting, which is a summer festival that I do at the South of England Showground, which I absolutely love doing. And then I'm actually booked in for the Knitting and Stitching Show in October. I'm not doing any small tabletop Christmas shows this year. I'm giving myself a year off. It might be in the future that I decide to go back to doing those, but for me personally, as a crochet designer, I don't have gift. It doesn't. It's not as profitable because my stuff isn't as giftable. It's it's really niche. Going into a more niched market like Stitch Festival, even though it's a sewing show, I know I I knew that this would work. Even though it's a sewing show, we're not just like mono crafters. We don't just have one craft that we do, do we? We literally have so many things that we are dipping our fingers into as creative people. So I knew that the crochet show would a crochet stall at that sewing show would work. I just knew it would and it did. Doing a more niche event definitely for me has been more profitable because what they're doing is the event is narrowing down the people who are just coming for candles and for paper illustration goods. You know, they're narrowing that down, they're coming for food. They're narrowing it down to people who are craft, hardcore crafters, who are looking for things for themselves. They're not even buying for friends or family. They, these events are set up very much for crafters to build out their hobbies and i fill that niche a lot better than like the craft gift the giftable niche um so yeah i'm going to be angling my business more towards these now i've already paid for knitting and stitching show so we are eating beans now until october um but yeah i would love to say that i take you along with me in october but i will probably forget it's such a hectic show there are so many people and the setup is crazy. I will try really hard to film some of it for you. But yeah, 
I hope that was helpful. If you've got any other questions about like prep for those sorts of shows and anything you feel I didn't expand on well enough, please bung it in the comments and I'll try and answer as much as I can in the comments as well. So thanks very much and I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye troops!